Aerospace physiology is the study that investigates the physiological effects on the human body. It goes into how our bodies respond to the unique challenges posed by the aerospace environment. And it's our job to prepare them for the potential risks. Our remote oxygen breathing device training uh, consists of pretty much a ground simulated hypoxia demonstration. Our spatial disorientation trainer is strictly that it is a trainer for our T6 pilots uh, and aircrew members so they can actually feel what spatial disorientation is like. So for our hyperbaric chamber training, we are physically putting students inside. My job in itself is to make sure that everything runs smoothly and safely. Each student has their own individual uh, symptoms and it's just to show like, hey, this is actually happening and this is what I would feel like. We provide essential, potentially life-saving training to all air crew members, many of whom are experiencing the demands of a flying environment for the first time. Our instruction bridges that knowledge gap, empowering them to face any challenge. We don't just teach about hypoxia, we bring it to life. Our goal is for every student to recognize their individual symptoms and confidently apply that knowledge in the air, ensuring their safety as well as the safety around them. We do not just train only Air Force individuals. We train multiple students from across the world, all across the country, as well as other sister services across the DOD. What we teach is life and death. So we are here to build a confidence. They can meet any of those challenges that pose a threat and they feel comfortable doing it. If individuals did not get this training, then they could definitely forget what they're doing, pass out under canopy, and potentially hit the ground really hard. So initially when we get the students in, we'll talk to them about what happens to their body when they go up in altitude. Pressure decreases when you go up, so you're going to be breathing in less oxygen, the gas inside your ears and sinuses. And then we talk about the oxygen systems on their aircraft, or if it's jumpers, their options when they jump. And then we go over situational awareness, some stressors, and then finish up with a lot on vision. An ROBD is a reduced oxygen breathing device, and we use that to simulate altitude exposure, high altitude, and the low oxygen levels. So when they put the mask on with the machine, we deliver them less and less oxygen over time so that they get those symptoms, they recognize that, and then show us the corrective procedures. One of the main things that they teach us is you know, not only the hypoxia training, but uh, probably the one that we use every single day is G-strains and being able to, to maneuver the aircraft as best as the airplane can go and as the best as my body can take it. And so they teach you so it becomes second nature. Vision is one of the first things affected by hypoxia or lack of oxygen to the brain. So we'll give them a color card. It has red, orange, blue, green, uh, and yellow as well. Certain colors are harder to see at night, something are easier. So we'll turn down the lights a little bit and then once we get them back on the oxygen, they'll start to notice those colors coming back and that they may not have noticed they were losing in the first place. It's so important because we have to be ready to go anywhere and do anything. So at any moment, we could be called and go do something, whether that is protection of the United States here, you know, on the East Coast or, you know, going overseas and doing that. So we're constantly, constantly training to be proficient as possible. I'm Airman First Class Ariana Rodriguez and I'm an Aerospace and Operational Physiology Technician with the 359th AMDS. Shift the body weight to the left foot without moving uh, your feet or returning to a standing position. My name is Senior Airman Heather Human. I'm an Aerospace and Operational Physiology Technician and I work alongside with Airman Rodriguez. On a day-to-day -day basis we train a wide variety of students between pilots, aircrew, loadmasters, um, linguists, boom operators, special missions aviators, and we train them to make sure that they're physically fit. 10 seconds. And able to physiologically be able to handle going up in the altitude in an unpressurized aircraft. By the way, before I even start, do you know what touchdown looks like? That's right. Yep, there are so many things that physiology Air Force wide does. There's many different types of missions that we have. But we all basically do the same thing. That's making sure that every single pilot, every single crew member that's out there, they are safe when they get on the aircraft. If anything happens to them, they know exactly what to do, how to correct for themselves. How do you feel? I feel like I'm tumbling forward. Tumbling forward? This way. Okay. Everything that we teach them, you know, it might be a long day of academics, but it could potentially save their lives and the rest of the air crew on board. Have, go ahead and pick that mail fitting and pull it, uh, push it into your green ship supply hose. So what people always think of the Air Force, they always think of pilots, airplanes, and we are directly impacting that. I'm very lucky 
to be working with someone with just as much work ethic as I do. We're both very passionate about what we do. We both give 100%. So we've always worked really well together. Three, two, one, stop. Run to the next station for lateral lunges. It's an empowering position. As far as being an AETC badge wearing instructor, training these pilots, go out and control million dollars of worth of aircraft and air crew that are out there supporting the mission. I love my job. All right, we're good. Thanks Thank a lot. You.